What up? Happy Easter. I'm Tyler, and we are celebrating the season with a series called Undefeated. And it's all about what we remember every year at Easter, the stuff Jesus defeated for us thousands of years ago. But before we dive into that today, let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever felt sad because you didn't want something to end? I have. This was when I was in high school. It's a little bit older than middle school. But I was playing soccer and my team made it all the way to the championship. Now I knew this was my last game ever playing in high school. You think, that's sad. Yes, it was sad. I didn't want soccer to be over. I wasn't gonna play in college, this was it. This was my last chance. So I thought, we have got to win this game. You know what we did? We did not win that game. We lost that game and <laughs> it was the last game of high school soccer I would ever play. I was so sad. Then I was supposed to go out to eat with some friends afterwards. They didn't show up. So I'm sitting alone in a McDonald's just eating a cheeseburger by myself because my friends didn't show up and we lost a soccer game and it was all over. You've experienced something like this before too, right? I think like we all have. Maybe for you, it was the end of summer vacation or it was having to say goodbye to the Avengers after the final film came out. No spoilers. Or it was the end of an undefeated championship season of softball. But unlike me, you probably won all your games. Maybe, I don't know. But when stuff like that is like, it's said, it's done, it's all over, we get so sad. Because when you love something, you definitely don't want to see it end. You don't want the party to be over. But maybe for you, the tension you're feeling about the ending of something is for a different reason. Maybe for you, the ending is heavier. Your parents are getting divorced and now their marriage is coming to an end. A fight happened in your friendship and the drama caused it to end. A friend or family member got really sick and their illness ended when they passed away. Endings like that are sad for a different reason. They feel heavy and final and like really, really painful. The truth is we're all going to have to deal with endings like these at some point in our lives. Every single person who has been born has one thing in common. One day, they're all gonna die. The life we live is one day going to end. Now that sounds like a bummer, doesn't it? Talking about endings of any kind has a way of making us feel sad, but talking about death, that's like a whole nother level. See what I mean? Take a look at this. Ta-da! <laughs> look at these balloons. If balloons had the ability to be happy, I'd say these would be the happiest of all balloons. They're, they're colorful, they're full of air, they're floating around. They're living what I would say is their best balloon lives. But the reality is, over time, they will start to deflate. They won't hold the air they once did. Eventually, they're gonna start looking like this. It's gonna stop floating around and it's gonna feel like the party is over. Now, I think sometimes that's like the way we feel about death. When someone dies, it can feel like that's it. Like there's nothing else left. And it can leave us feeling deflated and wondering if it's like truly the end. But what if I told you that there was another way to think about death? Whether you've experienced no endings like this or you've experienced significant loss already, I think there's something powerful that we can hold on to, something that will help give us comfort and confidence when we think about death. And it all goes back to one of those things that Jesus defeated thousands of years ago at Easter. Luckily, there are several passages of scripture in the New Testament that give us some insight about how we might look at death. Today, we're gonna look at one of those passages from a book called Corinthians. Now, Corinthians, not actually a book. It's actually a letter written by Paul, a guy we call one of the apostles. He was a leader in the early Christian church, like way, way back. And in this letter, he wrote to encourage a group of Christians living in a city called Corinth. In the chapter that we're looking at today, Paul spent time reminding the Christians in Corinth of something that was super important to their faith. In fact, it's what we remember and celebrate as the Easter story today. Jesus died for their sins, was buried, and then was raised back to life just three days later. We call that part, like the part where Jesus came back to life, the resurrection. Isn't that crazy? He was dead, but then he came back to life. And we know that to be true because there were witnesses who like, they saw it. They saw Jesus crucified on the cross and then buried in the tomb. But when they returned to that tomb days later, he was gone. He was no longer there. 
An angel of God told them that Jesus wasn't missing or lost. He had in fact been risen from the dead. And more than that, people encountered Jesus whole and alive again after his resurrection. That's very cool, right? Jesus' resurrection is pretty amazing for a lot of reasons. I mean, a dead guy coming back to life is like something to pay attention to, right? But it's so much more than just his comeback from the grave that we celebrate and remember at Easter. Jesus' resurrection changed the game for all of us when it comes to death. Because of it, we can now have hope that death isn't the real ending. Jesus defeated sin for us. And because of that, we can have new life, both now and forever through him. Let, let me explain. Here's what Paul wrote. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a lot to unpack there. But the main thing I want you to take out of this is, is just this. Because of Jesus, death is defeated. That's what Paul was reminding the Corinthians of in this passage. And that's what I want you to know today too. Paul said that because of Jesus, our dying bodies, the ones we're like walking around in right now, have been transformed into what? Bodies that will never die. Now, that doesn't mean we'll just keep going like on and on and on like some sort of like immortal superheroes. We're, we're still gonna face death at some point in our lives, but because of Jesus, we don't have to worry about what happens next. Because of Jesus, death doesn't remain undefeated. It doesn't get the last word. You see, when you believe in Jesus and live your life for him, you invite the God who defeated death into your heart. And when you do that, you don't have to wonder what comes next. You don't have to wonder how this story ends. Though our physical bodies may die, there is a heaven that goes on forever. There is hope. The party isn't over. We're not like a deflated balloon with no purpose or hope for the future. No, no, we have new life right now because of Jesus. And that new life changes us. It inspires us to change our thoughts, actions, and behaviors. It gives us hope. Jesus' death and resurrection made a way for us to be there with him if we choose to believe in him. Now, I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. When I look forward and think about the endings I may experience in this life, it gives me hope to know that Jesus made a way for there to be more than that. Because of Jesus, death is defeated. So you're still probably wondering, what does that mean for us in our everyday lives? For some of you, I think it could mean that you could have fresh hope that the story isn't over when it comes to physical death. That's what we celebrate here at Easter. Jesus defeated death, and then, because he loves us so much, offered the chance to experience that same victory through faith in him. The party isn't over. So if you believe in Jesus, this means you can rest in the hope that your faith in Jesus has given you. Let's look one more time at something our guy Paul had to say. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. So if you believe in Jesus, the very same spirit that raised him from the dead and gave him power to defeat death, it now lives in you. You're walking around with that much power inside of you right now because of Jesus. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel like I can face about anything this world throws at me. For others of you, maybe today is the day you want to learn more about all this faith stuff and what it really means for you. Maybe you've lived with a lot of fear or worry or uncertainty about so many things in your life. Maybe you've had questions about what happens next or what this whole Easter thing really means for you. Maybe you want to believe in Jesus and experience that same power at work in your life. If that's where you are today, a great first step would be to talk to your small group leader or another trusted adult about it. They can talk with you, pray with you, and point you toward the victory that we all have because of Jesus. Remember, because of Jesus, death is defeated. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. Why do we celebrate that? Because we're gonna live forever with him in a world that's amazing. And that's something worth celebrating. So 
As you head out today, I want you to be thinking about this. How does it feel to know you can have a guaranteed new and forever life today? Thank you.